start your presentation yes sir thank you ah. okay then Hello. Good morning, friends. Are you able to hear me? Hello. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, thank yes, you. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please mute. Yes, uh, please, please mute your mouth. <laughs> Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, a warm welcome you all for this uh, first session. So, uh, before I start, uh, kindly follow the the uh, whatever the rules, do's and do nots, which we posted and which we discussed in during the trial uh, run. Also, please follow that. Thank you. So now we'll start the first session. So this is an introduction to 3D printing and design. And this is going to be my outline of the content. We'll start why 3D printing and we'll distinguish the conventional manufacturing process and additive manufacturing. Then what is 3D printing? 3D printing design, 3D printing processes, applications, and how 3D printing is helpful during COVID-19. And finally, I will conclude my talk with the future of 3D printing. So this is what I planned for this first session. So then why 3D printing? So why 3D printing? Then we need to um a recap the industrializations the four industrializations so the first industrialization has started during 1780s to 1860 so that is mechanization so where the human muscle power got replaced with the machines when james watt invented the steam engine so where you have a steam and water was the energy used for the industry 1.0 or the first industrial revolution and then slowly your steam and water is replaced with electrical power that is happened during second industrial revolution so with the advancement of assembly line concept the henry ford at four ford automobile so then there was an assembly line concept came into picture during 1870 to 1960 and if you see the third industrial revolution that is during 70 to 2010 so where computers especially pc the the uh, revolution of the pc is changed the entire scenario so that was the third industrial revolution called 3.0 so where Automation is the concept coined. And of course, information technology, electronics was the players during industry 3.0. Now we are in the industry 4.0 in the currently we are here. So then what are the technologies or trust areas which we are talking about? So we have a cyber security, and you have a big data analytics, you have augmented reality, and you have IoT, Internet of Things, and you have a simulation, and you have system integration, and you have cloud computing, and you have autonomous systems. So then what about 
the nature of manufacturing in industry 4.0 so the manufacturing is getting shaped from subtractive to additive so that is the state of manufacturing during industry 4.0 so that is the fourth industrial revolution so as for the aba research so the am systems so will produce so 2 trillion worth of parts and end products by 2030 so this is the projection so what i am to uh, trying to say here is so additive manufacturing is the key as far as manufacturing is concerned so the in the fourth industrial revolution so additive manufacturing is the key so then why additive so why can't it be a conventional subtractive or reforming process why why you are so much people talking about additive what is the advantage until unless you don't have advantage so then there is no use to talk so then first we we'll talk about the traditional manufacturing systems so so start with subtractive process so where you have like machining you have a tool and you have a jig or a fixer sometimes we need to design and we need to keep on removing the material until you get the required size and shape and dimension and the geometry so basically you are removing the material so if it is a simple part like step it's fine so but i have a part something like this say i have some cup kind of a geometry so if i want to machine it so i have to you no know, consider or i have to see several constraints why because this is too deep to machine and there is an undercut here we need to minimum required a three axis machine and we need to design a fixer to hold it and there is a sharp feature here you cannot machine without a tool radius compensation so these are the main concerns if complexity increases your subtractive may be a bit difficult or it may add the cost to the product but right now we are talking about additive so you, you are not wasting the material you are adding the material and you are taking the complexity as simple here the complexity is free of cost you are going to get with the additive and of course you may have the other um, a traditional practice called a formative process uh, you may make uh, a die of the shape of the component which you are looking at and you force the raw material or you confine the raw material to the to the shape of the die that is in turn the shape of the component which you are looking at but here we need to make a die for each and every component so we need to design and we need to fabricate die that is a tooling tooling is very tedious so it may take months together to 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 design and to fabricate the tool so these are the concerns but additive if you come to additive route you can eliminate die or you can eliminate tool or you can eliminate fixes so nothing will be there here so then of course then the cost is the major point which we need to discuss so what could be the cost of the uh, a component so if you compare the three uh, processes which you are talking about so of course uh, if you plot uh, the graph between the cost of the part to the number of the parts so the cost per piece of course you can see a, a similar trend for the forming and subtractive so where you have the cost is very high if you are producing a less number of components and where it can be re drastically reduced if you go for a mass production but you can see the additive manufacturing uh, uh, graph it is not an exponential decreasing curve but it is a straight line maybe slightly uh, inclined downwards so fine but if my component is simple like this so then i can easily fabricate through subtractive or a formative process but my design is something like this so it is not a cylindrical shape like this if it is like this so then i would have i would have machined and i would have welded this onto that but but designer has not made a standard cylinder and then things like that so this design is topologically optimized or it is 
nature inspired design so then where the traditional practice will go if the complexity is improved and of course the cost also so you cannot get or you cannot conclude the cost of the piece of machining is having some x rupees of this component but you cannot produce with the x rupees of cost in the conventional machining so it may exponentially increase the cost once the design is complex so that is the concern here and of course the additive is here to help in this situation so then when do you select this additive manufacturing say you have just now we have introduced the parameter called complexity so if your part is more complex of course and your quantity you are looking relatively low better go with 3d printing but your complexity is medium and you are looking a medium quantity then go opt with cnc machining and your complexity is low and quantity is huge and then go with investment costing and your complexity is medium and you are looking for high quantity so then go with injection molding so then decide which one you go with so then what is 3d printing so uh, we have seen why 3d printing and when do you use 3d printing so then what is 3d printing so 3d printing is nothing but converting the digital objects into a physical objects so that is very much needed either through a mechanical engineer or automobile guy wants to design something some car body and then he wants to make some kind of a prototype or model or it can be a engine so nowadays recently i read one article so it is 3d printing gearbox so the gearbox of f1 formula 1 car had made with the 3d printing so don't estimate this technology so this technology is no more with the prototyping so this technology is on par with manufacturing that's what people are renamed rapid prototyping into additive manufacturing of course this is the extension of two dimension printing that's called is a 3d printing so whatever the name either you call rapid prototyping additive manufacturing 3d printing in my view all are synonyms so so you start with digital data and end with the physical object so that may be a mechanical component or a medical model or a medical device or a medical product so then you have to start with a scan data so there also you are starting a digital data and ending with a physical object and of course you have a third kind of uh, opportunity where you can work with a, a scanning systems or reverse engineering where this is a bit reverse to the uh, prototyping or the 3d printing where you start with a physical object and you end with a, a digital object so either you take a digitized data or a medical scan data or a cad model so your objective is to convert the digital into a physical object so that is about the 3d printing or additive manufacturing so then what are the steps involved in this 3d printing process so just now we discussed so then we need to have a, 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 a cad model to 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 start and of course what is your application so my application is to serve a coffee so that is my application so then i have to go to uh, a cad modeling software or if it is already designed and then i can download uh, say whatever it is say you start with the object with a cad model and you convert that as a stl file so these two things will be done in a software like solidworks or katia or any any cad cam cae software you start with a cad model and convert this as a stl file these two steps will be done in a cad cam cae software and there we have a 3d printing interfacing software will come here as a third uh, uh, component so where you import this stl file in this uh, 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 3d printing interfacing software and then 
you uh, fix the parameters say i want to orient this and I, I i need to do a layer thickness why because we are going to add the material layer by layer so i need to specify what could be my layer thickness and and my laser power if it is a laser driven or uh, what is the speed of my nozzle if it is a uh, uh, extrusion based system so so on and so forth so i can specify all my process parameters here in this interfacing software and, and we have uh, a slicing software here so this slicing uh, so this slicer will this slicer software will slice and it will generate a G code basically. This G code. So this G code will be sent to the machine. So the what you are trying to do here is can you mute your mic? Hello? 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 Can you mute your mic, please? Host, can you can you uh, unmute them or can you dismiss them, please? Sir, uh, choose them, sir. But uh, could I ever speaking this one, please? Hello, Yari. Daniel, are you available? Seventy-four thousand five hundred. No. Seventy-four thousand. So, sir, two minutes, sir. Uh, sir, the speaker who is speaking is Nataraj Puntoji. I can see here. Nataraj, uh, can you? His serial number is nine. Uh, thank you. So you. Hello, Rakesh. Sir, clear any Okay, and if he is repeating, you dismiss him from the meeting. You uh, you yes, give sir. one more, you check for one more time, and if he is repeating, okay, sir. okay, thank you, okay. thank you, Rakesh, thank you. Oh, yes, sir. So then we need to transfer this data. So whatever, anyway, we are going to have a lab session on each and every stage of these processes. So then you have a slicer software, which it will generate a G code and then that G code will be sent it to the machine. So as for your uh, uh, digital cross section, it is going to physically replicate here. And that's what during the build. And then you have, uh, 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 we have to remove that part and then we need to do some kind of a post processing like we need to uh, take out the powder and then it depends on uh, various technology. We will discuss a bit about post-processing also in upcoming sections. So then you, you finally you have your product. So your application is to serve the coffee. So your job is done. So this is the workflow, any 3D printing process it has to follow, but here and there the raw material and the energy um, you use and it may have a different process that also we'll discuss. So if you take a typical um, um, uh, process, so this is the workflow. So I will play a video. So which um, uh, this is basically an FDM process, uh, which uh, um, the, the, the STL file is uh, first oriented uh, as exactly what you are going to build that orientation. You fix the orientation and then once you fix the orientation, so then you, your software, just you can uh, specify what could be the layer thickness. So, so with that layer thickness, so say 0.1 mm or 0.05 mm, so the software will divide the entire model um, into layers. And that now you have a support, say overhangs. So it will give the supports and then it will generate a G code or a toolpath. And then 
um, you, you can uh, check if there is any overlapping like what you do in a CNC uh, tool path verification. And once you generate this tool path at a G code and it will be sent it to the machine. Um, so in the uh, in the machine, you, you are going to have a filament. This is a basically FDM system. So the raw material is a, a filament form of uh, for the polymer and it will start extruding rather than it will uh, melt and it will come with a liquefied stage and it will start um, uh, be building layer by layer as for the codes which you have generated in the software. So simply uh, it will uh, uh, go layer by layer. So along with the supports, which you can see there are uh, supports here. So the support and the model. So then once you uh, complete this uh, model takeout from the machine and then you remove that supports and if required, you can do some post processing on this model. Uh, uh, the, uh, depends on the application. So your post processing you can choose and then you can have a, a, a prototype or a model or it can be a end usage direct part. So nowadays that is the maturity of this technology. So then, so here the design is uh, the important here in the 3D printing. So why? Because uh, uh, just now we have seen 3D printing is uh, uh, nothing is impossible here. So then we can we can fabricate any complex or any bio inspired designs. So then we can quickly recap uh, various designs. Uh, normally you come across a CAD CAM CAE software, so either it is a parametric based designs and either it can be a, nowadays this uh, design is very popular called a generative design. So either it is a parametric design or a generative design or no, nowadays you have uh, the topological optimization. Normally you do design optimization shape shape optimization uh, uh, here the topological optimization is basically a weight optimization or you are going to reduce the weight so then you will be optimizing the uh, the weight or the topological optimization is the another uh, aspect which uh, uh, normally any software or some softwares which are good in topological optimization can do but design is not our goal we need to fabricate so then how to fabricate your topologically optimized say for example which you have some topologically optimized uh, uh, design this was the traditional design and where uh, uh, you have a different uh, design versions where you are trying to reduce the weight without compromising the functionality and of course uh, sometimes it may be better uh, properties than the conventional uh, uh, process and reduced weight is another uh, uh, um, uh, the advantage uh, during this topological optimization. So, or not only the topologically optimized structures can fabricate by this 3D printing. So, even you can fabricate a lattice structure. So, so it is. Uh, so, normally these designs are inspired from the nature or organically designed or bionic designs, where you will be inspiring these designs from the nature or from the cell culture or from the biology. So then your designs are very complex. So, but as I already mentioned, representation is not the goal, but fabrication is our goal. So then how to fabricate these, any design. So it is easily fabricated. You have the softwares, some softwares to do this kind of uh, uh, stuff. And of course, uh, simulation kind of uh, softwares like say, why you want to simulate? So definitely, if it is a polymer based uh, system you may not much worrying about if if some build, build failure occurs why because your pla uh, uh, may be costing around uh, say uh, 1200 or 1300 rupees per kg but that is not the case if if you are using a metal machine so your metal powder costing around 30000 rupees or 40000 rupees per kg so then uh, so build trials or build failures will cost you much so then we need to have some simulation to do before going to the actual uh, physical uh, fabrication so then you have some softwares so simulation softwares maybe workfac or maybe ansys you have added to print and you have a 3d expert from 3d systems and you have alpha star and geono and dizimat and you have hexagon simufac and of course from siemens nx uh, uh, sim center so these are some of the simulation softwares where uh, so you can simulate rather than so you have some distortion in the uh, uh, during the build and of course there will be a distortion and of course there will be a residual stresses especially for the metal printing 
so then we need to compensate them otherwise you may be come out with a bad quality of the part so definitely uh, these softwares may suggest some kind of compensation of the distortion or, uh, or how to minimize the residual stresses and of course how to optimize the support structure support structure is very important thing which we need to design for it to manufacturing support structure is the major concern so then uh, these softwares may suggest you to have an optimized support structures and of course to minimize the risk of uh, uh, printer damage so if you are working with the powder bed fusion system so then there will be a chance of uh, you know damaging the recoater or your uh, uh, part may crash with the uh, the or it will get uh, you know uh, 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 collide with the recoater so there will be a several chances then how to simulate and then how to come out with the best uh, uh, tool paths so so you can predict the impact of the post processing of course not only during the printing and then after printing or after during the post processing also so it will predict some impact so what could be the heat treatment uh, uh, so you, you you are using a, a heat treatment furnace to do that then uh, or you may use a heat process that is a hot isostatic pressing so then you know to improve the density so then you may use uh, and of course support removal so it will suggest you the best way of improving the post processing also so you have such a kind of software now available so then so then what are the 10 principles of 3d printing or 10 mantra of the 3d printing which otherwise conventional process may not uh, accommodate or may not support these uh, points or these are the mantras which we can talk about 3d printing mantras so first one is manufacturing complexity is free so of course say as i already mentioned uh, this part so if we, if it is a cylinder it would have been very easy for the machining but this uh, for the cylinder and for this component if you calculate the cost for machining or calculate the cost for uh, tooling it's 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 huge difference so but here your complexity is free 3d printing doesn't care if it is a cylinder or it is a bionic design so it doesn't care so your manufacturing complexity is free and variety is also free so i can make different geometries and i can make different dimension different forms all together uh, so in a single go otherwise i would have uh, made one die if it is i am going for a tool making uh, process then i would have make die for each component or i would have uh, tried with the different tools for individual part but here your variety is free uh, so that is another mantra which we can talk about and there is no assembly required here so i can make the entire part as a single piece so this is not a parts made separately and assembled no it, it is a lego tie but it's printed as a single piece it is not assembled so you have another advantage of no assembly is needed and of course you have a zero lead time so you, you, you because of supply chains shrunk or of course no more supply chains here so once you have a printer and once you have a cad design or a blueprint so you need not worry about all the supply chains normally what you much worrying about in a traditional process so there is a zero lead time here and unlimited design space say see your technology should not be the hurdle for your innovation right so you have an unlimited design space here so that is another another advantage and 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 biggest advantage is zero skill manufacturing say um, if you want to make a die so then you must have a very good uh, die designing uh, no tool design uh, stuff or if it is a cnc machine then we need to have a good in writing a g code m code but here it doesn't require such skill so you required only the design so zero skill manufacturing here and it is more compact and portable manufacturing so what do you mean by this say um i i my printer is of this size but i can pick i can print the component which is bigger than this also if i can i i can do that but if you if you talk about the conventional uh, uh, cnc machines or um, 
conventional machines so it is very big in size and very robust and it's finally it's at the end of the day it may be making a very small size parts but it is here the totally your manufacturing facility is very compact and of course it may be a a domestic uh, uh, manufacturing uh, it will this technology will enable you to 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 print from your home uh, or otherwise no other other technology will allow you to do this kind of uh, practice so especially during this lockdown period so you, people are talking about whenever you have a supply chain disrupt so this technology is very good in that situations so and of course you have a less less way, uh, waste by product why because you are not removing the material you are adding the material as for your demand so then there is no scrap literally and of course you have an infinite shades of materials what do you mean by this so if you take a traditional machining practice so you can machine only a single homogeneous material so either it is a ms or either it is an titanium but it's a single material but you have an opportunity here so you can print in multiple materials like say i have some uh, material which is a packing material of one uh, material and i have some circuitry maybe with lead or maybe with some semiconductor so i can print in a single go different materials so this is an opportunity uh, open up it is not at all possible with the conventional uh, manufacturing processes and finally you can make a precise physical replication means so you can play around uh, hot to soft or soft to hot seamlessly so that is another advantage which you are going to get so these are the 10 mantras or which we can see the advantages over the traditional uh, manufacturing processes so then we'll talk about uh, uh, i will give the glimpse of it anyway we are going to have a detailed sessions on these 3d printing uh, processes we have uh, totally three uh, sessions on this so i will give a, just a glimpse of this uh, uh, processes so any technology we need to uh, 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 most important thing is a material so what is a material that can be 3d printed so so you have a wide spectrum of materials so so right from the polymer metal ceramic composite and normally this is the classification but you have in a special materials like so you have some functional materials like some kind of electronics or some kind of a shape memory alloys so or intelligent uh, 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 materials nowadays you have a shape memory alloys aerogels so you have all these stuff so you can you can do it and of course the biological materials or organic materials or food even so on and so forth so we we can print all these materials and of course what is the form of a material so this form of the material either it can be a powder granule like uh, can coat them as a zero dimension or it can be a filament so it can be a wire or it can be a rod so of one dimension and it can be a sheet of a two dimension or it can be a liquid form the raw material that may be in a 3d so actually recently astm has standardized uh, these classification into seven groups so right from the binder jetting directed energy deposition material extrusion material jetting powder bed fusion sheet lamination vat polymerization so these are the seven any technology like fdm slm sls or sla dlp ebm so any technology it should fit any one of this category so that's what they have standardized uh, recently the astm f42 committee astm 5290015 so that the, if you want to see further so you can refer this astm code so uh, apart from the conventional traditional uh, materials which we discussed in the previous slide but this is an opportunity rather than uh, a conventional conventionally you cannot so say you have a multi material object say i have some uh, alloy a and alloy b so but i want to vary the composition so normally you call as a fgms right the functionally graded material say i so i can vary which you can see so i can vary my composition so my li b is so and so percentage my li a is so and so percentage and i can even grading these uh, across the uh, 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 part and i can make some a new alloy so or even you can go with the metal matrix composites so you can have a titanium titanium uh, carbonate 
so you can and which we can see this is one of the part uh, uh, FGM has got printed so you have uh, grading which you can see the grading of the uh, vanadium is graded here and it got printed through one of the DED process called laser metal deposition or powder uh, fed nozzles so uh, these are some of the nozzle and uh, novel 3d printing materials which otherwise you cannot make it through traditional conventional fabrication route so so uh, anyway uh, it's another version of uh, the seven processes uh, we will discuss in the detail and the due course uh, about all these seven processes so uh, so any process like uh, the important thing here is what is the raw material form and number two is what kind of energy source you are using it to to uh, melt or to process the material and and uh, and uh, how uh, the the physics how it is getting sticked the how the layers are getting sticked together so that is going to be the matter here uh, uh, so any any you know, one of the technology and material supports which i have listed here so we'll discuss in detail um, in the due course so so process and post process why you want to talk about the post process definitely post processing is a, a, a 70 percent of your cost can you believe that the 70 percent of the cost is going towards a post processing so that is the thing which we need to much worry about the post processing not on the printing or the not during the print or during the process so of course during the process nowadays you have some monitoring systems or feedback sensors or some data uh, analyst or artificial intelligence to support the process or if something goes wrong so then is there any artificial intelligence to to uh, to to recover back your uh, uh, quality or or in situ, in situ monitoring systems so things like that so you have some uh, like say print read or ink bit or mark for uh, blacksmith and you have several um, uh, process the the software people or the are the service bureaus which uh, they are working out and but this is at the initial stage but uh, it can be uh, nowadays which you, you can know that the data analytic or uh, artificial intelligence is playing a vital role and of course in the manufacturing also it's going to be vital role especially for the additive manufacturing uh, and once you print it through this monitoring or quality checking or uh, uh, or your data analyst so then we need to talk about the post processing so post processing again it depends on what kind of uh, process you have used either it is a, a, a powder bed or either it is a, uh, a, a vat photo system so then you have a different post processing methods so some systems may require support some may not require so then how to remove the support and how much cost it is going towards removing the support material and how much cost it is going towards the surface finish again it depends on the application where you are using this part and of course and you have some defect reduction as i mentioned hip that is a hot hot isostatic process and then you have the inspection or you have a testing uh, as non destructive testing or destructive testing so altogether it may be costing around 70 percent of uh, your part cost may go towards this post processing and of course you have a process control quality checks or work workflow optimization so and and of course uh, data security or the blockchain so then which uh, uh, now this technology is open or it's a digitally accessed and you have some communities or repository kind of a, a thing then what kind of a security uh, which you are going to give for this digital data so your blockchain and of course so finally uh, standardization so uh, how do you standardize these components after printing like so you have an iso you have an astm and you have an asm standards so this is also at the beginning stage why because this technology is relatively new so i think as of now 45 standards as out for from the astm um, uh, in terms of 3d printed parts either it can be a polymer or a plastic or towards uh, uh, certification or towards um, uh, qualification so you have around 45 and still they are working to uh, come out with uh, some kind of a standards from these uh, uh, organizations and of course which you can see the post processing how it will play an important role so you have some metal part so you see these metal part you have a support here right so then how to remove these supports and how to improve the accuracy and how to 
improve your uh, say you might have some kind of uh, uh, porosity or you might have some kind of internal stresses so then we need to have them for the use some furnace treatment or heaping or you have a several uh, post processing process ultimately you are going to get this kind of uh, 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 finished part so then we'll see uh, the uh, some general applications of uh, this technology and then we'll see the futuristic applications and we'll see the applications of right now we are in living in a, uh, a covid pandemic so so then we'll discuss some of the applications areas like uh, general applications futuristic applications and covid 19 related applications so we'll try to see these three applications so you can uh, so these are some of the application areas of 3d printed parts uh, right from the replacement parts uh, conceptual models functional prototypes the end use parts tooling jigs fixers visual aids branding promotions molds castings so these are the some broad application areas and if you talk about the area wise and the benefit what kind of a benefit you are going to get out of this technology exclusively and some examples i will try to uh, talk about this year at this point of time so the prototyping is application as we know that we need to have a faster production and less expensive and it will allow you complex designs this is the underlining word is the complex design so as you know that the complexity is free of cost here and of course where you can use this prototyping as you know that it is for the r d purpose or a product development purpose or some maker community you may use these prototypes so those are some of the examples for the prototyping of course aerospace aerospace is a never-ending quest for the lightweighting complex designs and spare parts so then g is investing nowadays um, they are invest investing a lot towards uh, their target right now they are making some five to ten percent of their aircraft parts engine parts i'm talking about or it may be in the cabin parts or under hood parts so their aim is to at least 30 to 40 percent of the aircraft aircraft parts they want to produce but right now they are achieved five to ten percent so then automobile is another area where what you are going to get the benefits from the automobile industry through 3d printing that is a faster design cycles and you have a cost and time savings for a small series productions and spare parts for rare vehicles like say f1 uh, car so you want to make some um, uh, say gearbox or uh, or uh, any engine part you want to make or gearbox so then you may have only a very limited number maybe one or two or maybe uh, maybe maximum 10 or so so then yeah which you can see there is a, a, a turbine as you know that gas turbine engine will be used for the sport car so then there are, people are making the gas turbine parts for the sport cars and of course the uh, customization from mini this uh, this is a luxury car manufacturer as you know so that for the customization of the automobile parts and of course medical is another area where you can make a patient specific design optimized textures for bone uh, in growth or you, you are going to mimic the the patient anatomy so that is the biggest advantage none other than this technology will give a such kind of a solution so it may be sometimes more transparent parts like invisalign braces or hearing aids or implants so these are some of the medical dental applications we'll see in detail and military of course what a military industry is going to get advantage or a benefit out of this is um, a simpler logistics and you have a spare part availability in remote areas or, or on ship it is uh, and you have uss sx printer installed on ship or at the site and you have a jewelry application in india the biggest users of the 3d printing is jewelry industry so jewelry is a faster design cycles is needed and unique and complex designs so these are the requirements or the benefits from the uh, jewelry industry many examples of jewelry designers are using this and industrial applications may be faster less specific expensive and complex designs possible and you have a turbine blades for generators by siemens and you have a tool jigs fixers you can make uh, and construction and architectural applications this is an upcoming area so where um, uh, again logistics is the issue here and uh, we can get wherever you have this kind of crisis 
uh, a shortage of uh, the manpower or the labor or simplified transport it will provide and basically the supply chains are very short if you compare with a traditional uh, manufacturing uh, or fabrication method so you have unique designs and there is a um, metal bridge uh, recently at amsterdam they have used the mx3d that is an unmanned aerial vehicles they used to 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 uh, there is an integration of unmanned aerial vehicle to the additive manufacturing there is a one which is a futuristic application actually so you have a sports uh, uh, and clothing so where we know in the fashion industry we need to have an individualization and you have an excessive fashion designs so you have this exclusive fashion designs from the um, fashion industry you can personalize the uh, the sports in case of a personalizing the shoes from nike or adidas and of course electronics so this is the hidden applications actually you can make but not with all the 3d printers some of the 3d printers can print electronics also conformal designs and uh, you have a potential less expensive large area electronics and improved performance and of course it may be right now maybe prototypes or some models like antenna rf antennas or sensors but still it is at the initial stage this application but there is a huge potential uh, this am with the electronics and of course we talk about uh, the, the the dentistry nowadays it is getting digital why because uh, no more impression technique normally they take an impression uh, from the mouth or uh, so there is an invisalign technology for the teeth aligners normally this is the traditional way of practice people dentists may use for aligning the teeth that is either a wire or a bridge uh, 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 they they will fix it but here which you can hardly notice whether he or she wants such kind of a, a teeth aligner so the beauty here is you can make a very clear uh, aligner and which it can be 3d printed and of course from the thermoform which material it's uh, it's it should be a fda approved material why because it is going inside the mouth and of course you have a huge business potential country like india why because you have a huge populated country so people may require say for example this is from us but india it may be a more number so it may be uh, maybe you can add uh, two digits to this so that is the potential in india which we can have uh, the requirements of these teeth aligners per day and of course you may need to have some printers to print or the productivity nowadays some printers are very fast 10 times faster than the conventional or the first generation printers of course we need to have some medical grade uh, uh, materials and one more um, advantage is a mass customized uh, hearing aid so you can collect uh, the uh, root canal data of individual patient through scanning and then you can print uh, the patient specific or, or customized and again it is a huge uh, hearing aid people who are looking for the hearing aids again that is that number is also a very large country like india like say which you can even mass customize so millions billions of parts all designs are different it is not a mass production it is mass customized so that is what this technology is uh, is is very much popular towards mass customized applications and of course um, you talk about um, in a medical you have the implants so you have a chest implant or you have a spinal implant so the beauty of this technology you can make partially porous and partially uh, a solid one and you can vary the porosity as for the bone anatomy of the patient so that is the beauty of this technology none other than this technology will give a customized implant like this which it is going to mimic the actual anatomy of the patient and of course you have a surgical planning models this is an um, uh, pediatric heart model of a, a small kid and of course we need to have some fda approvals either towards uh, software or hardware whatever it is but um, yeah you have some fda approved softwares and hardware and materials also to work uh, maybe in this direction and you have an orthopedic uh, uh, cast maybe um, uh, which you can see again it's a uh, uh, you are mimicking the bone structure uh, right and this is a patient specific orthopedic cast and of course you can personalize the medicines uh, for 
uh, drug delivery kind of stuff. So this is some of the applications where you can keep on talking these applications uh, in several folds. And then you can talk about the aviation. So aviation is the industry where they are looking for the weight reduction, right? So as I already mentioned GE, so they made traditional designs for 20 parts, but this was only a single part. From 20 parts to it, re they reduced to single part. And, uh, and of course the 5X uh, uh, durability, I'm talking about uh, the durability is improved five times than the traditional design. And of course 25% reduction uh, uh, in the weight reduction and of course 20 parts to single part. So this is uh, the order of the day people are using in aviation. And of course you have the combustor uh, in a gas turbine engine in an in aircraft. People are using this and of course you have and which we need to again advantage the bionic design which we can um, lightweight the structures. So lightweighting the structure uh, not only saving the fabrication cost it is you have an intangible benefit that is towards fuel saving right. So a typical study says that maybe one kg of weight payload if you could able to reduce you can save 500 to 600 kg of fuel per 10 months so that is a typical study so anyway you are going to have uh, the intangible benefits in terms of fuel saving not only the manufacturing cost it is reducing it is also reducing the the fuel cost and of course you have an uh, aerospace rocket so this rocket which we can see there is a um, again the fuel injector and the, the thrust chamber they made it as a single part otherwise you know it would have been separate part the fuel injector and it would have been a separate ch uh, thrust chamber and of course which you can see these designs or lattice structures which is inspired from the nature and where it's a light weighting that is the major advantage which you are going to get out of it so this is an um, inconel material uh, that is a nickel based super alloy so which is very difficult otherwise you you cannot machine this kind of designs or why because it's a bionic designs or lattice structures and which you have then why you want to go with not you you are going to get a double benefit with this uh, light weighting the structure and improving the cooling so that is another uh, advantage you are going to get a double benefit out of this 3d printing so and of course which uh, the heat exchangers the heat exchanger is another area where we need to uh, extract the heat so and again the bionic designs here is a playing a vital role where you can 22% uh, uh, lighter and uh, 20 55 mm smaller than the traditional manufactured part um, and you, which we can see these are aluminum or a nickel or a titanium or a copper so these are some of the materials which are very good conductors rather than uh, a copper nowadays people are able to print in copper also so and then you have some lung inspired heat exchangers so all these are only possible through additive manufacturing so of course you have some jewelry applications so so jewelry is the another area where you are looking for customized designs right and you have uh, Invisalign tech so which they are promoting this SLA mold basically it is an a wax pattern from the wax pattern so you can make the metal parts either silver or gold or or uh, titanium or platinum so you can you can once you make the the uh, 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 what you call uh, the wax kind of uh, material which it will you know uh, uh, vacate like you know the last wax casting process conventionally you are making a wax mold here uh, uh, or the pattern the you are making a mass pattern with this and you can link with uh, companies like i materialize and companies like even in india there is an indian company dna india so as i already mentioned jewelry we are very good in jewelry uh, of course uh, in india so you have a very good uh, investment towards jewelry people are investing until unless they doesn't have a savings they won't invest right and the the towards uh, uh, the compressing the time also so you may be able to reduce uh, weeks into days so that is another advantage very faster and even at the reduced cost so that is the underlying thing here 
and of course automobile which uh, even again from aba research uh, so there is a, a projection for the automobile parts so that may be 148 billions uh, and that is a forecast by 2030 so this is going to be the market for am printed automobile parts so it can be a, 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 a turbo engine for the uh, car f1 car or it can be a mini cooper for a customized solution or it can be a, a wheel it can be a tire so you have um, spare parts you can make a small series and customized tooling you can make a tools and you can make a design cycles and you can go for the quality enhance enhancements so these are uh, the uh, i'm going to give you here as a glimpse but you have plenty of automobile applications people have been benefited out of this technology and of course industrial tooling that is um, especially for uh, making a die or a sand core or an insert uh, for the tooling industry so this is giving a very good uh, opportunity for making a digital foundry rather than making an analog foundry you are able to make a, a converting your a foundry system into a digital foundry so you can make these uh, sand cast from the sand cast you can make the metal part from the binder jetting wax jet and sand molds in the metal parts and there is a huge saving 75 percent saving in the sand casting cost and of course from the 3d systems they got a multi-jet printing so where you are going to make a wax patterns and and for other uh, traditional ceramic shells will be made by using this wax pattern and then after uh, you know the pouring and then the molten metal you will get a metal part so this is a max wax mold from the investment casting applications and of course you have a molds for uh, uh, a tooling industry maybe carbon fiber composites and this uh, alta material from statasis and these are the um, fdm printed uh, molds this is in the tooling industry and again we will be talking about the time scale normally you uh, ask the uh, the tool making uh, guy uh, the tool industry so they will uh, say the development times the tool development times in terms of uh, weeks or in terms of months but so your months and weeks will be shrunk to days if you come to the additive manufacturing if you integrate additive manufacturing with the conventional tooling process and of course uh, electronics is another area um, uh, so where you have an rf antennas so which we can see how this technology is helpful for um, uh, for a guy like uh, an electronics guy so and this was the traditional design which consists of 100 parts but the beauty of additive manufacturing it your 100 parts has made only a single part right and this is the advantage which you are going to get out of it and and normally they used to use a brazing and edm to make all uh, this uh, parts and it used to take eight months to develop the entire 3d build but now it is a few weeks so your months now it has converted in terms of weeks so then that is the beauty of this technology and not only that you are able to reduce 95 percent of uh, this weight from the traditional design to the 3d printed uh, uh, design so you could be able to reduce 95 percent of the weight and 20 percent reduction in the production cost and 75 percent of non recurring costs so it's getting eliminated so this is the uh, the beauty of this technology even in the electronics uh, industry and and to name a few like uh, you have a 3d printed optics so you have a precision optics nowadays it is getting printed yes so you, you if, if it is getting printed so you, it doesn't require any polishing so polishing is the biggest traditional uh, optic uh, no uh, uh, maker so which we need to do uh, uh, polishing for the lens but it doesn't require so it is disrupting the the innovations and inkjet based fabrication this is uh, from the you know luxet and of course you have a personalized uh, shoe soles so nowadays adidas uh, uh, and nike with uh, service providers like materialize so they are producing a personalized uh, shoe shoes, uh, so which it can uh, personalize to an athletic or it can he may be an a diabetic so which we can uh, you can print to as for the size of the patient normally uh, sorry the, the user so then you have um, 
the thermoplastic uh, uh, polyurethane tpu kind of a material so and even you can see in a in a fashion industry like where the people are using this uh, so you can see this is a bionic design or a bio uh, design which it got inspired maybe uh, from elephant or some kind of uh, uh, animal or some nature inspired design so it's a bionic design but it's very complex because of bionic in nature so it is a very easily printed here uh, so that is a another area which we can talk and of course what not you can talk about this application in the uh, in the art so you have an unique uh, uh, ceramic printing like you have an fdm system extrusion based system like a delta configured and which we can see these are some of the uh no ivory or a van or uh, helped so which you can see almost it's uh, close to the nature so you have the uh, uh, something like this kind of uh, see which is almost mimicking the environment right so this is what which you are going to get out of this 3d printing ceramics or the stuff like in you know, art and what not like you have a food printing also now is on so you can taste 3d printed chocolates now and you can uh, you can print uh, 3d printed sugar or candies you can customize even and even you can uh, print some sushis maybe for decorating uh, so it's printing in a pixel based uh, food printer nowadays you have food printer restaurants also coming up so uh, the biggest advantage of 3d printing in food is you can customize again customization is the vital here in the food uh, uh, consumption uh, your own receipt you can you can make your own diet you can prepare as for that uh, nutrition suggested so even you can try that also so then that is a general purpose applications or uh, just a glimpse of applications covering a very few but now we'll see um, what is going to be the futuristic application of this 3d printing Uh, thing so definitely uh, in a future we are going to print an heart right now people are able to print some tissues some simple organs like uh, skin or blood vessels or bladders people are successfully printed taking the cell from the uh, patient and they could able to grow in a lab and they could able to add some nutritions and they could able to print they could able to prepare a collagen or they could able to take the cells of their own uh, uh, patient or the person who requires a, a organ or a tissue repair or replacement so you can make these collagen uh, cell link so then you can you can write from the universities like uh, 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 Kerniga Mellon University where they are uh, trying to print uh, these kind of um, structures of course maybe scaffolds or structures so this is an mri data from the human heart they have taken and then they made prepared uh, collagen by taking the uh, human heart cells of one patient and they put it in an incubator and then they grow in a lab and then they are tested in a uh bio reactors and then they they you can see like this is after 7 days so they could able to uh, grow the cell or tissue so uh, which we can see this is an a cardiac uh ventricles as a right ventricle and a left ventricle so this is the uh, this is going to be the future stick printing organ printing is going to be the uh, major area where we can see very soon these kind of 3d printed organs and of course uh, you have uh, two extreme uh, sizes of 3d printed parts you have a micro sized or even a nano sized uh, uh, parts maybe from two photon polymerization process uh, so basically you may use some kind of uh, a femto laser here and this may be the uh, you have uh, the, these much size is 10 micron scale and which you can see these are uh, printed the, the photonic material or you have an a meta material at micro stents can be made and you have another uh, uh, side you have a very big sized houses or uh, in a con construction industry 
like you have in a contour crafting there is a one technology from this professor uh, from one of the us universities so then he made these structures so you have a rapid response construction or you have wherever you have some disaster relief right now you have a covid and for the quarantine booths or you can make some temporary beds ready by 3d printed uh, uh, booths or 3d printed quarantine booths you can make people are doing it and you have uh, wherever you have a shortage of labor of course uh, that is the biggest challenge in a construction business right nowadays and nowadays like a lockdown period so now you cannot find these uh, a labor to do this kind of stuff but once you have a 3d printer so then you doesn't require any labor to fabricate right so and then one more futuristic uh, as i already mentioned your 3d printer in terms of a robo so your 3d printing and robotics can be integrated can be married together like your robo can make some structural uh, arbitrary in size this is from nainang technology singapore and of course from the G uh, gxn uh, from uh, denmark that is in amsterdam so the robots are used to 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 build uh, construct the bridges so which you can have a, a crawl or, or, a, or a swim or a fly kind of unmanned aerial vehicles to, to, to 3D print bridges or any construction applications. So this is going to be the futuristic uh, uh, things. So that is about the futuristic applications. Then we will uh, move on to the next uh, 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 part of it is uh, uh, what this uh, 3D printing is going to do uh, during the COVID pandemic so uh, as we know that uh, this is badly needed uh, these kind of um, uh, what you call the uh, uh, personal protective devices uh, or we need to have uh, a ventilator parts and and we need to have a, a diagnostic uh, devices or to test rapid test kits so uh, and these are uh, the things which it's going exponentially today also uh, which you can see the statistics so india is number one in, in uh, the, the exponential growth of this covid cases so then what the 3d printing is going to help you under these circumstances and of course you can make your ppes um, so you can make uh, uh, the uh, sh uh, the what you call uh, the shields and goggles and you can and you can customize even so you can customize as for your head size so you once you have a design and these designs are shared in a in in, in an online community like thingiverse or uh, grabcad or you have nowadays you have a very good number of uh, uh, repository kind of uh, uh, systems where you have an online community you have uh, millions of parts free of cost you can download these stl files or dot prt files or whatever it is so you can download these parts that is uh, another advantage zero skill manufacturing that is about the zero skill manufacturing why because you you, you are not going to make a die so normally you make an injection molding die to make this but i can sit in my home then i can print once i have a, a, a digital design or a CAD model of uh, these uh, uh, things. That's what your 3D printing is helpful or more uh, domestic nature of uh, fabrication or more democratized manufacturing system. So why uh, a manufacturer has to do and a, a homemaker also can print these parts once you have a 3D printer with you and, 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 a, and a design with you, right? And of course, uh, the, the 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 level of protection from your airborne particles that is also uh, playing a vital role how, how much you can protect from yourself you know, right so you have these um, uh, 3d printed uh, 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 what you call the uh, shields and you can 3d print uh, even uh, this uh, shield can be printed and of course the frame is already 3d printed and it can be uh, a high thickness gsm size gsm uh, transparent sheet or even it can be 3d printed also with some of the materials but it may be a bit costly if you 3d print but it may be a gsm sheet it may be less cost 
so and then uh, this is one of the france uh, hospitals they have installed around 30 to 40 uh, 3d printers uh, in the hospital itself and as i already mentioned through the 3d printing community online community uh, they could be able to download these designs uh, this is basically a stock gap mask which uh, even you can customize as for your size that is the biggest beauty of this so then you can you can fix your uh, filter box and then you can you can connect with the half of filters also here so basically this is a stop gap mask which you can uh, the designs are open so you can uh, the, the community people they are sharing to the hospital people and then without contaminating this otherwise again this might have printed somewhere and who we don't know who is going to print and whether that person may be having a corona affected or during the supply chain we don't know what is going to happen but better you compress your supply chain you keep your 3d printer to the user or to the hospital uh, uh, personals so then where you can uh, uh, directly serve the hospital uh, personals uh, without infecting these um, uh, and of course material which we need to uh, uh, have some Kind of fda approved materials should be used for these kind of applications for the frontline people like doctors or some paramilitary uh, people and uh, people who directly interface with the covid 19 pa patients so you must have a special care once you are giving them or you are donating them to uh, such kind of uh, uh, but if it is a normal public it's altogether a different story so and then uh, another uh, a shortage is uh, uh, the ventilator so people are looking for uh, alternative for the ventilators so either uh, a what you call uh, the oxygen will be supplied through some kind of exile kind of uh, uh, devices or uh, what you call uh, some kind of valves peep valves called a positive and expiratory pressure valves so you can uh, uh, you can uh, just you can supply the oxygen that is the idea of any ventilator right so then how to supply this ventilator but here what 3d printing has helped is if this is from materialized company so they have um, made uh, open this uh, uh, kind of design of this uh, mask actually so this mask will connect to the hefa filter and where your oxygen uh, will come from the oxygen uh, uh, cylinder uh, to this and through some kind of uh, exhaling system like a peep valve and then from that peep valve the oxygen will come to the hefa filter and here this mask is printed uh, and this is a medical grade uh, and this may not be required for all the covid patients so then the patients which are normally take the breathe uh, again statistics are saying 5 to 10 percent people only required badly ventilators but but 90 percent of the people can survive through alternatives to the ventilators like this so that's what the 3d printing community is helping in this uh, direction sorry and there is an uh, respirators so this is from the hp so hp if you visit this website from the hp so you can choose your uh, uh, respirator or a mask or ventilator uh, parts so which you can uh, 3d print actually this is 3d printed through hp uh, uh, technology multi-jet uh, uh, fusion technology and these are the parts and you can customize your uh, respirators and you can connect through the half of filters you have a provision to connecting here and this design is also uh, so you you can go to a hp website and even in in india also like uh, uh, you have some partners for the hp and even India also they are promoting this kind of uh, respirators and and one more thing here is uh, you have uh, uh, as I already mentioned the oxygen supply so this oxygen may come through some kind of uh, what you call um, uh, say uh, some blowers and from the blower and which will be coming through this valve this uh, these valves which you can see these are 3d printed and which it fitted to the, your uh, mask system so where uh, this blower will be operated through an, a battery and then the oxygen will come here so the basic idea of 3d printing here is you can make your 
mask valves or ventilate uh, the kind of uh, venturi valves or uh, or uh, these kind of valves and even these automobile uh, as you know that ferrari is a french um, uh, the uh, car manufacturer uh, the race car manufacturer so they are donating these kind of uh, mask valves respiratory mask valves to the hospital and like in india also we have a mahindra has come out with kind of developing some low cost ventilators and some substitute for the ventilators and of course this is one more case study from italian one of the italian hospitals um, so basically you may looking for an oxygen wall which it is connected to your ventilator and again these valves should be uh, replaced or you cannot use for each patient we need to replace we need to dispose these uh, uh, valves but we, we never expect that you may require these many ventilators and hardly you may keep inventory of one or two ventilators in the hospital and you may keep one or two valves of inventory but not more than that but under this covid pandemic so 200 to 300 number of oxygen valves are needed for the ventilator per day so but india it should be more but the thing is here like how uh, this kind of demand will be cope up by the manufacturer say you have this ventilator supplier so then you say that i need 200 or 300 uh, ventilator uh, the valves for this oxygen valves for uh, for your ventilator so where you will go so then what these guys they have done a reverse engineered it and they made in a mass production or at least 200 to 300 um, per day so and one more area as already mentioned is the nasal swabs so for rapid test uh, mcr test kits like where you can um, uh, uh, these nasal swabs can be made through uh, 3D printing, uh, the process called SLA or DLP technology. So where uh, which we can see these uh, nasal swabs are shared in the uh, 3D printing community and then further it turn uh, the hospitals, uh, it will be shared and which we can see with a single tray, you could be able to produce 200 to 300 uh, number of uh, nasal swaps uh, in a single go and that too in a desktop pr uh, printer i'm talking about so that is a, a form labs printer so which is very small in desktop in nature that itself can produce uh, 200 300 per run maybe three hours or four hours so you could be able to make these many number of uh, nasal swaps so that is the thing where uh, you can use this technology for uh, diagnostic purpose means for testing kits so the rapid uh, testing kits uh, which we can uh, even you may use a desktop printer so even you can use uh, the industrial printers even further to 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 uh, increase the productivity uh, so even they could be able to produce uh, from the one of the universities that is 3000 nasal swaps per day so that's what they are producing it where um, uh, we country like india we need more tests should be done and we may require more nasal swaps to 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 fabricate uh, and one more idea from the materialize uh, normally where you have these door handles um, is the culprit or where uh, especially for the public places or the hospitals so where you will be uh, touching with your fingers or with the uh, what you call with your uh, palm so then that is the uh, uh, what you call uh, the uh, the virus will spread so that is the culprit where we need to avoid so just by uh, you can download the from the materialize they have a different designs of stl files so you can down as download as for your door handle configuration uh, you can even fix it with the screws or even you can fix it with some kind of uh, uh, wire or some kind of cables which you can fix it and the idea here is you, you are using elbow not finger or not a uh, what you call a palm you are using elbow you are not spreading the virus uh, yeah and this is from Vinson Vinson is a company from China they make 3d printed houses and in this case this is a 3d printed um, uh, quarantine boots and in these quarantine boots so they have uh, given electric uh, electrical supply and they have given 
the uh, the wa uh, water uh, fitting the the uh, plumbing has done and electricity has given uh, and of course again this is from wuhan city actually uh, as we know that they made um, uh, within the war putting basis they made ready the number of uh, uh, the uh, beds that's available in the, one of the uh, hospitals and apart from those uh, hospital beds and they made this temporary or disaster kind of a management or during the covid uh, situation they print i think maybe around 10 houses or 10 quarantine booths per day so they have printed and they have installed in uh, one of the hospitals at wuhan so this is what where you can use this technology for construction especially for the disaster management and of course uh, uh, unmanned aerial vehicle is another area where uh, you have uh, six rotor uh, uh, quad captor or uh, the kind of uh, unmanned aerial vehicle here as you know that uh, people are taking the services of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles to um, sanitize or uh, to for the surveillance purpose so of course which we can 3d print for the light weighting these structures so you can change the infill densities if, uh, either it is uh, basically it's a polymer so which we can change the infill density and we can make it light weighted and of course where you can have a payloaded uh, container and you have an extension arm and you have a hoops everything is 3d printed and of course the housing for the batteries and the housing for the uh, cables and uh, electric cables is done through this 3d printed uh, parts from the uh, havoc ie technology from china so and then uh, there is a, a company called uh, prisma health so they are um, uh, this is a ventilator splitter so this ventilator splitter so the idea of a ventilator is to serve one is to one so means one ventilator uh, one patient but uh, this design minimum it will support two or even if you connect one more so and you connect one more it may be you it may be accommodating maybe three to four patients with this with a single ventilator and they have designed and of course medical people and engineers has to work together to making these designs uh, under this pandemic and of course people have been working with the doctors the engineers are working and of course uh, this is a splitter which you can see it got um, fitted to the uh, ventilator and from the ventilator you have uh, the oxygen will come and basically this covid cases are due to this respiratory uh, uh, syndrome so then we need to uh, so from this which we can see this is connected this is right now is accommodating uh, three uh, patients um, with a single ventilator it is accommodating three patients so which you can see that is the uh, the balloon which um, yeah, it will supply the oxygen for the patients so and one more thing here is like how it got approved from the fda so this is um, the pandemic situation and then how uh, these can be approved by the um, uh, authorities like uh, the fda is uh, federal drug administration or any other uh, authorities to give the clearances for these materials designs and products of course so then the the fda is kind enough uh, to give a fast track approvals uh, during this pandemic situation so so then that's what uh, people are able to um, even save more lives uh, uh, under this uh, pandemic situation uh, and of course uh, different people are coming out with the different uh, ideas one among is how to convert your manually operated ventilator to automated uh, your ventilator uh, functioning so that's what university of california they made they converted the manual ventilator into an automated ventilator by 3d printing these parts uh, and then they have uh, connected this uh, uh, balloon uh, with 3d printed by giving uh, the strokes through this motor and then by varying the motor speed and of course the quantity of oxygen which it will be coming 
and which it will be supplying here and which your lungs uh, the patient lungs will be you know the, the oxygen how it will be getting supplied so this will be uh, the kind of um, alternative for or more automating the ventilators or looking for an alternative for the ventilator uh, situations and of course this is a, a covid 19 virus infected lungs so which we can see uh, this is a in infected virus um, this is 3d printed actually so and normally if you ask a radiologist so the majority of the time or traditionally so they will look on these uh, MRI or a CT or a ultrasound images. Um, but radiologist may understand, but you cannot understand. But even though for the radiologist, instead, instead of looking at a, a, in a two dimension like this, and if you have a, a model like this, which you can show uh, the, the level of infect, infection or the neurovascular structures, or uh, this uh, soft tissue, um, things like that. So you can, uh, how it is getting printed, so means you must have some software to enhance your black and white images into a colorful, or which is mimicking your uh, patient uh, uh, organs or the tissues or the cells. So this is going to happen in some of the medical image processing software. You can give the life to these black and white uh, images and further you can print them and you can communicate to the patient or different uh, surgical teams to communicate to educate so this is uh, uh, the covid 19 uh, during that situation the 3d printing how it will be helpful so and then uh, we are coming to an end of this uh, presentation and what could be the future of this 3D printing technology is all about. So what could be the future? So right now we have seen multiple material options from the 3D printed uh, multiple structures, multiple material structures, not only multiple material structures, it may be mimicking or it may be taking the cells of patient and it will be, so means you are able to print the cells also it is not a, a material um, a, a cell is a natural material or uh, it is not a man-made material so which you have gone one step ahead than conventional fabrication process so um, that is a material side which we are talking about and of course applications also which we have seen some general purpose applications and some futuristic applications and of course COVID-19 related applications so, so you can keep on talking about these applications sky only the limit to talk about these 3d printing applications so 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 far and whatever we are seeing is basically a, a, a static structures almost right so you, you are going to print only the static structures so you are not going to print a dynamic or intelligent structures right so still there is a gap to explore the 3D printing technology in terms of printing a, a futuristic structures. So then just we can talk about what is a one dimension, you know what is one dimension and you know two dimension and you know three dimension and you know 3D printing is all about so far whatever we have discussed is the 3D printing. Then what is 4D printing? Or what is 5D printing? Is there any 5D printing is available in the universe? The answer is no. There is no 5D printing is available. So right now there is a 4D printing, but 5D whatever they tweeted or they posted somewhere in the in the social media or somewhere, uh, this is not a 5D printing. So this is a 5D machined structure or welded maybe structure. Uh, this is a five axis machine basically it might have um, processed through a five axis machine but it's not if it processed five axis machine we can't say that is a five axis component right but it have only three dimension but it doesn't have fourth dimension nor a fifth dimension okay so then 3d printing is 
uh, so you have a 3d printer in a 3d printing of course and you have a material and of course you need to have some a digital blueprint or a digital data or a cad data to 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 feed or to take an input to the 3d printer and then ultimately you are going to get the static structure uh, from the 3d printing technology so means this structure remains same forever it doesn't deform maybe again depends on the material characteristic maybe durability another issue but basically it is an a static structure which you are going to get from the 3d printing technology but what extra you are going to get with the fourth dimension called 4d printing so the 4d printing the material itself you have a smart material here so it may be a shape memory polymer or it may be hydrogel or it may be a, any a smart material uh, it should change its form then only or it should adapt the structural change or the form change or whatever dimensional change it should adapt or it should such a kind of intelligence that a material should have so that is the basic requirement of the 4d printing technology the material should be a more a smart material rather than a simple material right and how do you model this material so for the 3d printing just now we have seen a design for additive manufacturing or simulation you have some softwares to mimic 3d printing technology but how do you mimic 4d behavior so that is the biggest challenge so of course your traditional algorithms or of course your traditional modeling techniques may not sufficient to model your smart material so you must have some inverse problem modeling so if you are interested you can go to mit website so they have started this 4d printing a bit of simple structures so then how do you model your inverse um, problem modeling for your smart material and structures things like that so and of course you have a multi material 3d printer which we need to have why because you are going to print uh, multiple materials not a single material and that to a smart material for that you have used some kind of uh, a different uh, uh, modeling technique here uh, and then finally initially you are going to get some kind of a static structure but the 3d is getting into 4d or your static structure is getting converted into a dynamic structure how it is possible so you apply some energy or due to stimuli or maybe the energy may be in terms of temperature or water or any form of your energy so that should deform or that should transform your static structure into a dynamic not only dynamic it should be an intelligent structure so then it is quite possible with the 4d printing so how do you contrast to the 3d printed with the 4d printing so in the 3d printing you have uh, a structure something like this some kind of uh, a petal open petal but if i apply some energy or some stimuli so if i stimuli this 3d printed structure so slowly these petals are getting folded right so and finally over the period of time so it is getting folded so it can be a non living material or it can be a shape change with respect to time so that is is all about 4d printing so it can be a, a robotic gripper or it can be a medical device something like a, a normally you use a stunt for the heart patients right so so then if you are having a, such a kind of a blockage kind of situation so if your material is a smart material which is implanted in the heart so so whenever he or she gets a stroke so then your uh, ventricle or your uh, uh, whatever your structure of your heart it may be open automatically and it will allow you the heart will allow you to pump the blood so that is wonderful uh, as far as 4d printing application in medicine if you talk about so very soon we are going to see these kind of developments 
and of course uh, in a futuristic also which you have some nanos or, or micro sized particles and of course in future further you can see uh, uh, the nano or micro sized particles and of course you have a multiple material with a self healing microstructures and ball and socket uh, releases the critical stress and you have a 3d printed batteries also uh, is slowly coming up so which you can see more in future why because uh, the the revolution in the automobile is a battery a driven automobiles right so lithium ion battery or more uh, uh, what you call your backup should be more right now the technology may not be sufficient no to 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 a long last your batteries but of course you may have very soon you may have see this kind of 3d printed batteries and and what could be the approach of 3d printing in future so in future so as for one of the professors from mit or university somewhere in uh, us universities so their idea is um it is going to be a voxel based printing so it's not going to be the layer wise printing in future so it it is going to be a, a voxel based printing so which you can arrange these voxels so these voxels are printed so like some kind of a, uh, a printer or assembler whatever you call basically it's an assembler which it's going to assemble these uh, voxels so these voxels a you know pixel pixel is a two dimensional element and if you give a third dimension so it will become an voxel so these voxels the, what is the advantage of voxels yes so you can attach you can easily detach and you have a different materials for the different voxels we can easily assemble we can easily disassemble and you can easily recycle it so you have a lot, and it can be printed maybe order of uh, gigabytes or maybe terabytes or what not like so you can have very high speed assemblers uh, these uh, voxels can be assembled so it may be the combination of digital analog means your structure uh, not only a different uh, materials here multiple materials uh, here and it can be uh, functionally it can be a different material say i have uh, Mm, say for example you have a cell phone you take a cell phone of example so the cell phone you, you have a screen and you have uh, the whatever you have a cover and you have electronics part and you have a battery in it and you have circuitry in it so the dream of a 3d printer so can we print a cell phone as such a single functional component or product so so that is the futuristic or of the the goal or the dream of any 3d printing is going to be nowadays you are able to print a zero assembly or that is a single part maybe 200 parts or 300 parts you could be able to uh, print it in a single component then why can't it possible to print but there will be a lot of challenges it is not that much simple or you put it another way if one robot a 3d printed robot which is printed through this machine can step out from the machine and can walk so 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 that is that is the uh, future or that is the thing what uh, which we can uh, anticipate not immediately maybe down the lane 15 years maybe 20 years at, there will be a lot of developments are happening the exponential increase in patent filing in this area uh, so we can't say anything can happen we never thought that we are enjoying this 3d printing when it was started in 1982 or 83 when chuck hull or charles hull invented 
a process called SLA called stereo lithography operators. Uh, but even he he may not or he could not thought that this technology is getting shaped like this. So it was only the these requirement uh, to make some prototype fastly means from digital data from CAD to prototype how to make with no time for the product development for a prototype so that idea now we are enjoying those seeds of person like Charles Hull and he himself invented the STL um, file format still it is a defect of standard so AMF or 3MF or it is not replacing uh, the STL still it is going a defect of standard uh, to his credit and he started a company called 3D systems also so he is a, a bureaucrat also not only inventor no 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 my suggestion is say uh, I have been working this in this area uh, but what I am observing say Charles Hull has filed the patent in 1982 but there is a one guy from Japan he filed the patent the same idea much before during 60s he filed but he could not commercialize his patent so that is the if anything you invent so you patent it not only patenting you commercialize it so that is the underlining thing like which we need to take it into commercial exploitation of your uh, the invention so then only uh, you have some kind of sanctity for your invention so means you try to record whatever you have invented or whatever you have some something you have done right so and then i will conclude my uh, presentation with the last slide so so far whatever we are seeing is just a tip of iceberg the applications i am talking about and this may be a bit older also this is from 2013 polar statistics uh, report from 2013 so 2013 itself which we can see whatever we are seeing the applications in terms of models or in terms of prototypes and in some in terms of master patterns plastic parts for aircraft parts and high-end consumer products and you have a low-cost consumer products tooling inserts and medical implants now it now it has you know grown and now it has now raised now people are somewhere here you can able to even print the batteries also and electronics also and you have a custom prosthetics and you have a metal aircraft parts that's what i'm quoting ge airbus rolls rice or whatnot honeywell so they are uh, investing a huge money towards metal 3d printed in aviation and aircraft applications and of course clothing is another area where it is coming slowly now and maybe right now fashion industry may be using it and of course food is also now coming up maybe still it is under uh, what you call it? it's upcoming area uh, the, the food printing is upcoming area and of course you have an integrated electronics is also upcoming area and living tissues this is the underlying thing which we are talking about the bio printing so then you are coming with the living tissue printing also now and printing in outer space of course nasa is experimenting taking the 3d printers to the space uh, to the lunar or to the moon so the without uh, carrying the huge inventory uh, again the payload is an issue and then you can the nasa can send some designs digital designs and then they can print there itself so then of course that is also happening and you have a smart intelligent structures that's what slowly you are talking about 4d printing or things like that so you have a smart intelligent structures and human organs so can you print a real human organ simple organs people are already done but like can you print a critical organ a functional critical organ like a heart liver kidney 
our lungs now lung is a critical organ now under covid 19 so can we print them yeah so that is the or uh, uh, any unimaginable applications so that is the beauty so where very soon so we can see all these applications uh, in more realistic nature so then then i will close my session and then i will hand over to the uh, organizer uh, the host to uh, have the questions uh, okay guys uh, think uh, I, maybe i uh, i request you you go one by one don't make it noise but just one by one we will we will try to answer as many as but one by one yeah. Uh, whoever have the doubts, please ask your questions one by one. Unmute yourself and then ask your question. Or you can uh, post your question in the chat box also. Here, uh, yes, you may carry on. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes, uh, myself. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, can we try 3D welding on the uh, 3D printing on the welding? 3D printing on the welding. Yes. Yes, we can do it through DED process. We can do it. Yes. Yes, it can be done. It can be done through DED process, directed energy deposition. It is possible. Next, next question, please. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know. It was a very nice session, but just I was a bit uh, conscious to know that how the strength of the three D printed object is maintained as compared to that what we get by a traditional process yes very good question madam so the strength if you compare the strength of the 3d printed components so the astm standards and the literature is saying that metal 3d printed parts i am talking about so the strength will be on par with the casted parts so so that is the statistics so it can be maintained uh, but there will be issues as i already mentioned in the presentation you have some uh, what you call uh, the uh, internal stresses and you have some challenges and then through the post processing we could able to get it 100% dense absolutely fine we can we can get it the strength on par with casting yes next question Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, good afternoon, sir. This is Dr. Piyush. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, I'm working in materials actually. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, uh, are we ready with the materials available to print commercially all the materials? Is it available in India? Okay, very very or, good question. Very good question. Commercially means like say, can you can you be elaborate? Uh, I had heard about ABS, PL, and other things, but some okay. specific materials. Suppose I am working on natural fiber composites okay. and other things. Polymer, okay. I only polymer. I had heard 3D printing, but suppose I no, want no. to develop. No, no, no. Yeah, I got it. I, I got your question. So, yes. Okay. The, the the answer is yes. You you can make okay. fiber reinforced composites we can we can okay. make we can make through fdm technology also we can make so absolutely absolutely we can make through composites uh, can be made uh, and okay. we have a session separate session on that uh, mr rakesh is going to cover that but the the, the answer is yes it is possible okay. through fdm okay. it is possible yes it's possible actually i was asking that how that material is to be made preparable for printing that was my question actually yeah that's uh, this filament only filament, uh, filament. Fil okay filament, filament only. okay yeah it's, it's a filament only he is going to talk about how you can make the filaments also so how okay. you are going okay. to make uh, with the extruders 
uh, and then we we are going to see how a powder can be made one of the sessions uh, uh, the powder preparation the raw material powder preparation uh, characterization of the powders and of course the another form is the filament and liquid we are not going to cover the liquid but definitely you are going to have a flavor of how to make powder how to prepare the powders and how to prepare the filaments you are going to get the flavor yes next okay thanks uh, last two question uh, please make sure that it should be a valid one last two questions whoever has yeah. doubts yes uh, good evening sir uh, Sir, uh, actually, I just uh, want to know the application of this 3D printing technology uh, for common people uh, of our country of India. Uh, since this 3D printing technology looks very costly, uh, even if you go for a FDM machine or SLA machine, it costs about for five lakhs. If you go for a standard machine, standard machine from standard or some brand uh, company, if you're not going for a China-made company. And then how it will be helpful uh, for common common people, at least if not poor people, the, how it will be helpful to our lower middle class people. Um, since we, are, we also know that even in today's time, uh, India Indians do not have the access towards a laptop, computers, and uh, net connectivity at some remote areas. So how we can, uh, as a faculty member or as a researcher, can make this technology uh, reach to the farthest part of our country with a minimum amount yes. with a minimum got it. got it got it so first thing is whatever you said is correct but let me let me correct something but anyway you you, you are you are talking about only the proprietary costly printers but you have open source printers so or you can have a diy kind of printers which you can build your printer you can spend say 10,000 or 15,000 rupees. You can build your DIY kind of a printers, but it may not be on par with the quality with the uh, with the proprietary mm -hmm. or the so costly printers. But mm -hmm. your application, whatever your application, your application demands only prototype. So then definitely you you can use this uh, open source uh, printers and open source softwares. So you, it's it's not uh, no costing you much. It's not costing you much. People have been using that. So you have a desktop, uh, not only uh, FD, you have a desktop SLA systems. And very soon we are going to see the desktop metal also down the lane. Hello. Why? Because these patents are getting expired. So it is no more costly, but still some technologies, it's costly. I do agree. But mm. because of open sourceness, and definitely in future we can see further uh, reduction in the hardware cost yes next yes sir hello hello yeah. uh, i want to ask hello. Num that is number one um 4d printing facility is available in india that is one question and second question is three what is the status of 3d printing that is when it is going to how fast it replace cnc machining and hard metal machining hard metal metal machining in terms of time finish tolerances etc okay okay first for regarding your first question 4d printing yeah. in india there is no facility but 4d printing is under development so there is no commercial 4d printing and you have some patents from the mit very soon we are going to reach to the market but so far it is not existing but it is under development that is the first question answer to the first question and second question whatever you are saying so this is the 3d printing the status but it, it never be replaced with the machining so it never it never happen so it will be having its own identity machining having its own identity and wherever you have such a requirement of just now we have seen we, uh, during my presentation you might have observed so such so such kind of applications where we the application demands uh, some kind of uh, uniqueness so definitely hybrid may be going to be the vital in the future so machining will be there 3d printing will be will be there but if you combine the machining maybe with the 3d printing so that is going to be the future but machining will be retained it will be retained it never replaced but but the 3d printing speed you are talking about the 3d printing speed so we can put yes. it in 3d printers into three generations but if you compare the speed of the first generation to the third generation it is 10 to 20 times faster than 
first generation to the third generation 3D printers. I think I have answered your question. Hello, sir. Yes, no, sir. with Thank respect you. to machine, what will be its, uh, what will be the speed and finish? Can it replace? That's what that's what I'm talking. So no, no, no. If you that... talk only in terms of speed, no, no, no. And, no, no. Uh, it's, it's, it, it uh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Okay. Arun okay. So we, we have to uh, other people also. Any chat chat box questions are there? Yes, uh, sir. in chat box question 184, Richa Agarwal. Actually, they asked like, uh, sir, how Complete. the technology completed? No, please, yeah, Arun, completed. please mute, please mute the all the people. Please mute the people. Okay. Uh, yes, question 144. Can it can it be used for a high alloy steel P20 materials like? Yes, it, it, it is possible through DED. It can be done. Next. Uh, next question, sir. Are the interface software available freely for FDM? Yes, yes. Cura, Cura is a software is available. Slice 3R, and we have a several softwares. And Cura, anyway, you are going to work on Cura also. We have planned some exercises also assignments also on cura software that is the interfacing software come slicer software yes next uh, last question sir what type mm. of strength test can be done for 3d printed part yeah it, it is as, uh, as like uh, ndt or as like uh, conventional uh, testing but asdm standards yes to yet to establish but it is under development but you can you can conventionally whatever the test you can do you can do that one conventional test can be ndts or kind of a test you can do it yes thank you but uh, no, we will, will wrap we will, it yeah we will we'll get get no no you have because running short of time so you can discuss afterwards sure. also you can you can you can drop me the mail if, if you can otherwise yeah. if we'll see some kind of Forum, uh, I will address. But this is the lunch time. We have to break, and then we have to again assemble back here by for the next session. So then uh, we'll break for uh, the lunch, and we'll assemble back at 2:20. The uh, sir, is this the yes, oh please. sorry 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 sir. and one yeah. more thing. <laughs> so okay, we are we we are uh, putting uh, the quiz in the chat box. So then, five minutes only. Yes. So and then you complete your quiz within five minutes, and we are going to close the response within five minutes. Okay, sir. I'm posting the link. Right. Right. You can find out in the chat box. The link will be appeared in the chat box, the Google Doc. So you can complete within five minutes, five questions, and responses will be closed within five minutes. So, hello. Thank you. Hmm. Hello, sir. 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 Hello, sir